Global Crusades, the five, Bible-based signs and wonders, anchored by an able teacher, anointed tutor, approved taskmaster, apostolic talker, aggressive thinker, approachable touch, awakening tongue, acquainted toner, accessible teaser, answerable teaser. He is the just pretendant of deeper Christian life ministry. Welcome. Pastor Dr. W.F. Komui. Praise the Lord. Calabai said, Praise the Lord. Aren't you happy and excited that Calabar has become the center for the whole globe? And all eyes are looking at you. And then we're all looking to Jesus. And tonight, give me a good amen. amen. Will be the time of your breakthrough in Jesus' name. Amen. Every problem, every sickness, every sin, every infirmity, every bad luck you brought here, you'll drop it here. And then as you are going home, power will go with you in Jesus' name. I welcome everyone in every country, in every city, in every locality, in every home, anywhere you are, we connect to the Lord through Calabar here and power will explode in every life in Jesus' name. Today is a special Monday, yeah. Miracle Monday, yeah. Signs and Wonders Monday, yeah. Solution to Your Problem Monday. Yeah. Somebody shout Amen. Yeah. Father, we thank you for your love, we thank you for your power. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. And we thank you for the great things you are going to do in every life, even tonight, in Jesus' name. Manifest yourself. Expose Satan to the people and let every power of Satan be crushed in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, because we know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. You can sit down in the blessing of the Lord. Sit down for your signs and wonders. Tonight we're coming to Acts of the Apostles. I remember every night the Lord has been speaking to us about one aspect or the other of signs and wonders and tonight we come to another passage of scripture that is talking about signs and wonders acts chapter 14 i'm reading from verse 3 acts 14 reading from verse 3 long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the lord which gave testimony Unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. The Lord Almighty, as the apostles spoke concerning the Lord, concerning what he has done, what he is doing, and what he will yet do, the Lord gave affirmation, confirmation testimony to the word of grace which they spoke and he granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands anywhere the word of grace the word of god the word of his goodness anywhere that word is declared faithfully and truthfully the mighty power of God is always at work. And I come to you tonight with the word of the grace of God. That grace is available for you. 
Mercy is available for you. Divine love is available for you. God loves you. If you were the only one in the world, look up here. If you were the only one in the world, as bad as you may be, as sinful as you may be, as rejected as you may be, as despondent as you may be, whoever you are there, if you were the only one on earth that needs salvation, Christ will still have come. That's how much God loves you. That's how much heaven accepts you. And as we reveal to you the word of his grace and mercy and love, and you accept that, and you receive that, and you hold on to that and embrace that, the love of God will sweep away every problem in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Tonight, I'm speaking to you on spectacular signs and wonders through faith. Spectacular. Somebody shout, spectacular. Ah, I can't hear your voice. That spectacular sign, spectacular wonder will come to your life through faith tonight in Jesus' name. Why do I always want you to respond and talk? Number one, I want to make sure that you're still awake. Some people come to a meeting like this and they have been walking throughout the day and they are tired and they sleep while I'm talking and they are sleeping while I'm talking. They will not be able to get everything I say. So I sometimes want to hear your voice so I will know you are alive, you are awake and you are there. And if you are online and you are by yourself, you know the tendency is to sleep when you are hearing, uh, you know, somebody and then you are seeing that picture. But when I say, give me an amen or say something and you wake up and you say something, you keep alive and the dynamic power of God will reach your life there in Jesus' name. <laughs> Spectacular signs and wonders through faith. There are three things I'm talking to you about tonight. Number one, systematic study of the word of faith. The word of faith. Systematic study. Now please, there are people that study the Bible, but they are not studying to listen to the word of faith. They are studying uh, and they see the word of judgment. They are studying uh, and they see the word of calamity. They are studying and they see the word about the fault of other people. They are studying and they see their weakness and they see their depravity. They are studying. All they can see there is the fall and the evil and the things that are bad happening in the world. And they receive nothing. They just have knowledge in the head, but there's no transformation in their had. But when you come to the word and you study the word of faith, the word of faith, because faith is the center of everything as you come from the beginning and to the very end. And the Lord talks to you about the word of faith and you study that and you accept that and you apply that and you embrace that and you believe that and you act on that word of faith that faith will energize you everywhere you will rise up if you were sleeping or lying on the ground the power of faith will hold you there pull you up impossibilities will become possible that's why when we study, we study the word of faith. Number one, systematic study of the word of faith. Number two, steadfast towards and the walk of faith. From the word that enters into you and it supplies all the strength, all the power, all the energy you need, and then you are able to walk, whether it is Monday or Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday, Friday or Saturday or Sunday, you are walking upright. Something will come to you today. Your spiritual backbone will be energized in Jesus' name. 
and all the things that made you weak before and then you are bending to the devil and you are listening to Satan and then whatever I wanted you to do you did but now the word of God that you study will come to you and bring strength and bring power you will rise up like a giant you will walk like a giant you will overcome like a giant and everything that stands before you you will walk through and i see you walking to progress and walking to the peak and walking to the provision of god in jesus name when you walk any any hurdle before you any stumbling block before you as you are coming they'll be clearing out of the way sickness will clear out of the way calamity will clear out of the way impossibilities and mountains will clear out of your way in jesus name that's why tonight has come i'm going to be faithful to the word of god as a steward of the manifest grace of God and then everything you need to make you stand straight and to make you sit straight and to make you walk upright it is coming your way and as you receive you are going to stand strong and you are going to walk by faith in Jesus name you will walk like a soldier Unconquerable, unbeatable, unstoppable. I see somebody there walking upright and going up in Jesus' name. Number three is the same surrender to the wonders of faith. The same surrender to the wonders of faith. You see, there are people, they know God can walk wonders. But there is something in their hand they are not surrendering. And once you hold on to that thing, then you cannot catch the wonders. I read the story of how they catch monkeys. You will not be a monkey. I will not be a monkey. They put granuts and bananas in a glass container so that the monkey can see that and the, the whole of the glass container is only as wide as if your hand is empty you can put your hand inside once you hold anything and you want to pull your hand out you'll not be able to put your hand out away from the uh, from that container and they put the banana there and the granuts there. Monkeys like banana. Monkeys like granuts. They see it like this, and there's no, they're not going to pay anything. That's what they think. They will pay for their lives. They may not play with, pay with dollar or with uh, pounds or with, uh, you know, whatever currency in your country or Naira, but they will pay with their lives. They put their hands inside and then they take the banana as they want to bring their hand out. The monkey cannot bring the hand out. And the hunter is watching from somewhere. And the monkey cannot see the hunter. And then he drops it, he puts his hand out, he says, no, I will not let you go. This thing, I will catch this thing, I will eat this thing. And he puts his hand inside again and tries to draw it out because he will not surrender that banana or that monkey. Then the hunter comes from behind and knocks him on the head and catches him. Satan will not catch you. Calamity will not catch you. Demons will not catch you. But you must surrender that thing. Don't be a monkey. The people that say, I must go after that fleshly pleasure. I must go after that property belonging to other people. I must go after that charm. I must go after those drugs. 
if you don't surrender that, the hunter Satan will soon get to you there, knock your head out, and then pull you down until you'll be crying forever and ever. Had I known, had I known, I would have dropped that thing tonight. You will surrender. I'm talking to somebody there. I said tonight you will surrender. The same surrender for the wonders of faith. And the wonder will come to your life tonight. Let's look at number one. Number one, systematic study of the word of faith. We're coming back to Acts chapter 14, verse 3. Acts chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 3. Long time, therefore, abode thee, speaking boldly in the Lord. Speaking boldly in the Lord. Anyone that is going to talk to you about the word of God must be in the Lord. Don't allow anyone outside the Lord. A psychologist, a philosopher, a man of the world, a woman of the world, the one that doesn't know Jesus Christ as his personal savior is not in the Lord. And Satan is the God of this world. And Satan is the God of everyone who is not in the Lord. The people that are qualified, the people that are appointed, and the people that are sent to you to give you the word of faith and the word of life, they are people that can speak boldly in the Lord. Why do they speak boldly? They are partakers of the salvation of God. They are partakers of the grace of God. They are partakers of the goodness of God. And because the Spirit of God is bearing witness in their heart, there is no sin in their lives. There is no compromise in their lives. And there is no evil in their lives. There is no charm in their pocket. And there is nothing they bury anywhere. They know that they depend upon the Lord through and through, every day and every moment. Because of that, they are in the Lord and they speak boldly in the Lord. And then the Lord says, I know them, I recognize them, I, I know that they are my children, they are my servants. And he gave testimony, he gave confirmation, affirmation unto the word of faith, which, or the word of grace, which they speak. And tonight, as I in the Lord, I'm talking to you, I'm bringing the word of God boldly unto you, you will accept the word. I accept the word. You will apply the word. I apply the word. You see, when you hear the word of God and you don't throw it over your shoulder, they are talking to them. They are talking to those other people. But you say, no, I accept the word and I'm going to apply the word to myself. And you believe the word. You believe every judge and every teacher of the word of God as you believe it. What you believe in the word will work in your life. When I say Jesus is Savior and you believe that, it will work in your life. When I say Jesus is healer and you believe that, it will work in your life. When I say Jesus is our deliverer, redeemer and you believe that, it will work in your life. When I say Jesus is the power of God giving unto us and you believe that, that power will work in your life in Jesus' name. I accept the word. I apply the word. I believe the word. I embrace the word. I will not let the word go. It's not only on the crusade field here. I'm hearing the word is my savior. I've accepted him as my savior. And then I embrace that word. And I will continue in the word. As you continue, miracles will continue with you. As you abide, miracles will abide with you. That's what you do. And then 
I pass on the word. It has done you good. It is doing you good. And then after the, that same word, the word of his grace, you pass it on to your neighbor. You say, I had something and then it gave me freedom. I had something and it gave me salvation. I had something, the word of his grace, the word of God, and it gave me salvation and the joy of salvation abides in me now. You pass it on and then the Lord will grant you the Lord will grant you signs and wonders to be done by all our hands in Jesus' name. Tonight, signs and wonders. Salvation. Healing. Deliverance. Breaking of yoke. Removing your mountain. It will happen tonight in Jesus' name. Uh, look at Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 8, Romans chapter 10, look at verse 8, but what saith it, the word is near thee, even in thy mouth and in thine heart, the word is near thee, even in thy mouth and in thine heart, that is the word of faith which will preach the word of faith, which will preach. You see, there are people, they hear the word in the church at the crusade. After they finish hearing the word, when they hear in Jesus' name, we pray and we disperse and go away. They leave that word on the chair where they sat. They leave that word in the pulpit where the word came from. And then they go back empty-handed. And in the night, when Satan knocks at their door, there is nothing to reply Satan with. Because they left the word. They don't remember the word when they get back home. But it says the word, if the word is going to work in your life, that word is in your mouth and that word is in your heart. And it is the word of faith. And so carry your mouth everywhere. And you carry your heart everywhere. Anywhere, any trouble, any challenge will rise. That word will come out of your heart like a mighty sword. And the devil will flee away from you in Jesus' name. That means you retain the word. You keep the word. Thy word have I hidden, kept in my heart that I might not sin against thee. It is that word in your mouth and that word in your heart that will keep you away from every evil. Number one, it comes to you and it gives you salvation and then it gives you steadfastness and you abide in the Lord because the word is in your mouth, the word is in your heart. There are some people, they say they hear the word of God and then after they leave the crusade, then they say, praise the Lord it was a wonderful time and as they go out temptation comes to them and the temptation wants them to do something foolish something silly something sinful something evil and the word is not in their mouth and what is not in their heart but if you have heard the word of God and that word of God is hidden in your heart, is coming from your, your mouth, you will tell that tempter, temptress, it is reaching. And the tempter or Satan is to get in them, they will flee from you in Jesus' name. Anywhere you are, let the word be in your heart. Any challenge you face, let the word be in your heart. And don't just keep it in your heart. Speak it out with your mouth. Look at verse 9 there. It says in verse 9, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth, that word is in your mouth. If that word shall confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, to say that Jesus is my Lord, Jesus is my King, Jesus is my controller, and shall believe in thine heart. Shall believe in thy heart. Hold on, look up here. You say it with your mouth, 
you believe it in your heart. You know, there are people that are split personalities. They say something with their mouth. They know they are lying. They don't believe what they are saying in their heart. You know, such people, you cannot depend on them. Heaven cannot depend on them. They say something with their mouth, but their heart is saying, you don't believe what you are saying. Are you not lying? They are liars like that. You will not be a liar. Yeah. Satan is a liar. You didn't answer me. Yeah. And he knows when somebody is telling a lie. Because he is a liar. He is the cheap liar. He is the champion liar. He is the continuous liar. He is liar from beginning to the end. And when somebody is a liar, professional liar, chief of liars, the champion of liars, and he even teaches a course to the whole world on how to lie. And so, when somebody is a liar, Satan recognizes the person. If you say with your mouth and you don't believe it in your heart, the devil knows you are just a liar. He recognizes every liar. Jesus is my savior. But it's not real in your heart. Satan knows that a liar, that's a liar there. And he said, Jesus is my healer. You say it with your mouth, but your heart does not believe that. He knows you are a liar. I will not allow Satan to catch me a liar. You will not allow Satan to catch you a liar. When I say Jesus is my Lord, I say it with my mouth. I believe it in my heart. I act it out in my action. And if that is you, that you say it with your mouth and you believe it in your heart, miracles will never stop in your life. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Satan may say you are not saved. Satan is a liar. Thou shalt be saved. A religious people may say you are not saved. They are all liars. But thou shalt be saved. How does somebody get saved? He hears about Jesus. That Jesus died for us on the cross of Calvary. On the third day, he rose again for our redemption, for our justification. And he believes that in the heart, Jesus died for me. He confesses it with his mouth, Jesus died for me. Salvation will settle in your heart. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, for what the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And then what the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Do you see here the heart is mentioned, the mouth is mentioned. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. For what the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Some people say they believe and they're still unrighteous. Uh-uh. Doesn't work that way. If you really believe, uh, thank God I believe. I said, thank God I believe. If you really believe, uh, before I continue that sentence, somebody says, fire is burning. And then you come out and you say the fire. If you really believe, uh, that's fire there. You will not go in there. But if you believe, uh, it's only a picture. They are only making, uh, you know, whatever drama. It's not real fire. If you don't believe in your heart, you'll just walk through. When somebody says, there is hell, and it's hell fire, and the fire is forever and ever, and it is for every sinner, it's for every liar, it's for every adulterer, it's for every fornicator, it's for every thief. If you really believe that fire there, you will turn around, you will repent, you'll believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and nothing will make you to ever go in that direction. But you see, there are people, they say, I believe, I believe, and they still go stealing. 
I believe, I believe, and they still go lying. I believe, I believe, and they still go on in their fornication and adultery. They don't believe. For what the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and what the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you have not come in, you're coming today. I said, if you're still outside, you're coming to that salvation today in Jesus' name. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, for whosoever, whosoever, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That whosoever means anyone. That means you. That means you, no matter how deep you have gone in evil, no matter you are a drug dealer, no matter you are a drug taker, no matter your life is shattered and your life is torn apart, but the whosoever you say have heard that Jesus is Savior and Jesus will save me now and you come and you call on the name of the Lord tonight, you'll be saved in Jesus' name. Whoever you are, you're being idol worship, and you are the chief of those idol worshippers, and you're the one that will gather their instrument, whatever for them, and idolaters will end up in hellfire if they don't repent, and then you are afraid of that fire, and you're saying, Lord, I don't want to end up in hellfire, and now I'm going to call on the name of the Lord to save me, the Lord will save you. Because whosoever, somebody help me say, whosoever. Who is that whosoever? I said, who is that whosoever? Mention your name. Tell God your name. What's your name? Whosoever that you shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And it comes all by faith. Look at verse 17. It says in verse 17, So then faith cometh by hearing. As you are hearing the word of God, suddenly you say, Yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. I'm saved. Yes, I believe. Jesus is my Savior. He died for me. So then faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. And that faith will not only bring salvation, it will bring victory in your life. I have the victory. I am a conqueror. I will overcome. Mountains will move out of my sight. Say it now, Calabar people. Mountains will move out of my sight. How does that happen? Look at Ephesians chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 16. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able, ye shall be able, ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. The shield of faith, anything the demons, any sin, the people who have swallowed Satan, any sin, the people who are evil and bad, anything they throw at you, your faith will be a shield. They will strike the shield, they will never strike you. All the darts of the wicked one, if you have faith in the Lord, and you have it in your heart, and you confess it with your mouth, and you are righteous, and you have the salvation of the Lord, and you keep that with you every time, everywhere you go, I'm telling you, victory now is guaranteed in your life. Victory is guaranteed in my life. At the gallery, let me hear you, victory is guaranteed. In my life, <laughs> beloved people on the ground floor, everywhere, victory is guaranteed in my life. Accept the word, apply the word, believe the word, embrace the word, act on the word, and keep the word constant in your life.
power will never stop in your life. And then in Matthew chapter 21, verse 21. Matthew chapter 21, verse 21. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, If ye have faith and doubt not, If ye have faith and doubt not, The people who doubt, They are always going up and down. I believe in Jesus, uh, I believe in charms. He's my savior, uh, Papa, in the village, or the charm, or the idol, is their savior. And then, the Lord is the joy of my life. Uh -uh. Alcohol is the joy of their lives. They are always here and there, here and there. They are not stable. You'll be stable. Once you accept Jesus, believe Jesus, Embrace Jesus, hold on to Jesus, looking at Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, and you say, idols no more, sin no more, immorality no more, idolatry no more, only Jesus, Jesus only is my Savior. Once you are settled like that, and you hold on to that Jesus anywhere, any day, everywhere, Victory will never leave your life. That's why it says, Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this that is done to the victory, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. That's what we are going to do tonight. A sickness in your life like a mountain will speak and say be thou removed and we don't have any doubt in our heart and you don't have any doubt in your heart that sickness will vanish away that oppression will vanish away that calamity will vanish away and then the manifestation demonstration of faith will work in your life in Jesus name if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. Tonight, it shall be done. In your life, it shall be done. In your brain, it shall be done. In your personality there, it shall be done. Look at verse 22. It says in verse 22, And all things, all things salvation, and all things healing, and all things deliverance, and all things the moving of mountain, and all things the crushing of the head of the devil, and all things the breaking of every yoke, and all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. I have received. It's confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. Point number two now, steadfast stewards and the walk of faith. We're coming to Acts of the Apostles chapter 14 and I'm reading from verse 7. Acts of the Apostles chapter 14 verse 7 and there they preached the gospel. They have been preaching before, but now and there they preached the gospel. And they have been preaching in different places, and now here they preached the gospel. Those are the stewards of the Lord. Those are the servants of the Lord. And they are steadfast. And they are committed. And they continue in the Lord. And they continue in what the Lord has called them to do. And they preached the gospel. What does that mean? They preach the gospel of God. Not the gospel of man. The gospel of man, the gospel of denominations cannot say. They preach the gospel of God. It's not the gospel of philosophy. It's not the gospel of religion. It's not the gospel of turning over a new leaf. It's not the gospel of heaven helps those who help 
themselves. It is not the gospel of, I will do my best and my best will save me. That's not the gospel. All I've seen and come short of the glory of God. By the deeds of the law shall no man be saved or justified. And could your tears forever flow? And could your zeal no respite no? All that for sin cannot atone. Christ and Christ alone must save. If you gave all your money to the church, paying the pastor's deal, and thinking that will save you, that the gospel of man, it cannot save you. All the money in the world, if money could save us, Christ will not have come to the cross of Calvary to die for us. If washing in clean water, holy water, Jerusalem water, Jordan water, or the river in your village, or the river in all the places the people are touring to, they are going to, if that water could wash away your sin, Christ would not have come. The gospel of man, the gospel of churches, and the gospel of denomination, and the gospel of religion, cannot save you. There's just one gospel that can save and it's the gospel of God. The gospel of grace and the gospel of his goodness that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting life. The gospel of money cannot save you. You know, I contribute money and our pastor knows me. I give this, I give that. If money could save you, if a philanthropy could save you, Christ would not have come. Only Christ saves because he's the perfect one. He's the very son of God and he died on the cross of Calvary for you. When you abandon everything, everything you are depending upon and you say, I know the good news, the gospel, and this is the message that comes from heaven that the gospel of God has now come and that gospel, you accept that, you believe that, you embrace that and you jettison and you reject everything Every other thing, the salvation of God will come unto you. The gospel of God, then the salvation of God, they come together as you accept, as you believe, as you embrace the gospel of God, then the salvation of God will come unto you. Amen. And there they preached. The gospel. Look at the result of that. Look at verse 8. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his speech, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had worked. And then in verse 9, the same heard Paul speak. The same man, impotent man, paralyzed man. A man that had been born paralyzed from the time of his death. That man heard the gospel. And he knew it's not the gospel of money. I don't have the money. It's not the gospel of education. I don't have the education. It's not the gospel of philosophy. I'm not a philosopher. It's not a gospel of psychology. I don't know psychology. It's not a gospel of the rich. I don't have that. It's not a gospel only for the Jews. I'm not a Jew. It's the gospel of God. And God is the creator of heaven and earth. And the creator of everyone. He heard Paul speak. And he said, this is for whose Soever, and this is for me. As you have heard the word of God today, this is for you. Amen. Salvation is for you. Amen. Redemption is for you. And the healing and the deliverance of the Lord is for you. The same heart Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Faith to be healed. He believed what he heard in the heart. He whispered out of his mouth, This is for me. I'm going to get it now. 
I will rise up and walk now. Miracle will come upon me now. Signs and wonders will be done in my life now. He believed and he said so. And then we're told in verse 10, and we're told, and Paul said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. And he lived and walked immediately, instantaneously, because he believed it in the heart. And Paul did not have to go there and say, brother, can you try and walk? No, he didn't have to say that. Can I pull you up? Can I help? He didn't have to say that. When faith is in your heart, you rise up there, you're walking in Jesus' name. Or oh, uh, in a particular village some years ago, and as I went around in the village, I wanted to do some personal evangelism before the crusade in the evening. We saw this woman, and she was dancing around a pot, and then they poured oil on that pot. And then I stopped her and said, Woman, what are you doing? Oh, she said she was worshiping her God, and her boy over there was lame, paralyzed. And just sitting down there watching the mother dancing and going around the porch. I said, this is your God. Look at what he has done to your child. I will pray to my God and my God will raise up this child. Oh, he said, if you do that, if my child gets up, I will abandon this idol. I said, no, you are not the preacher. I am the preacher. I'm the teacher. I'll teach you what to do. Abandon the idol first. After you do that, then I will pray and the child will get up. He said, no. I said, I'm not here to debate with you. I'm here to tell you what you do. And if you do what I'm telling you, miracle will happen in your family. The same thing tonight, if you do what I'm telling you, miracle will happen in your family in Jesus' name. And so the woman took up the pot. She believed. She accepted. And she acted on the word. You must believe. You must accept. You must act on the word. And put your faith into action. She lifted up the, uh, the pot, smashed it on the ground, and broke the pot. And there was nothing or even underneath the pot. It was an empty God. Empty God. No power. No, no uh, visibility and nothing, no strength at all. After she did that, I didn't touch the boy. I just stayed back. And the boy did not understand English. And I couldn't speak the local language. But God understands the English I speak. He understands the situation of the child. And wants to pray to God and God understands you. God is the one that will translate what you say into a miracle. And tonight, the Lord will translate everything I say into a miracle in your life. So I said, boy, and the boy had never walked in his life. I said, boy, in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. And all of a sudden, the boy did not even try. He just stood up and then started walking like this. Because the mother accepted the word, believed the word, acted on the word. And today, as you do that, look at this man. Paul the apostle shouted with a loud voice. Rise up, stand up, pride on thy feet, and he lived and he walked. It will happen Amen. to you, it will happen. Amen. What I say, you accept, you repeat, and the miracle in your life. Amen. Where are you? Whosoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be healed shall be delivered and there will be a solution to every problem in your life. Come to point number three now. Point number three, say surrender for wonders of faith. The wonders of faith. 
as you surrender the property of Satan. You understand? You're a lady. And a man has been giving you something, thinking that maybe you'll marry him. And now you decided you've seen a person that will beautify your life and you're going to live forever with that on earth, with that man, you love him, and you want to give yourself, your hand, your heart, your body, your future, everything into his hand. And then the man who had been giving you scarf, dress, shoe, bag, money, heard that you are going with this other man, and he came to you, and he said, what oh, story am I hearing? I hear that you are leaving me and you are going to another man. You say, yes, that is true. Ah, you are not serious. You don't mean it. See, this dress on you, my dress, this cap on you is the one I bought and these shoes you are wearing and the bag you are holding, you are going to carry my property to another man's house. How can you do that? Then you realize I have to surrender all that he has been given unto him so I can be free. Tonight, you're free. Yeah. And so you pack up everything and everything he had given. You said, have what you gave. And then the man knows you're serious. And now you say, bye-bye, I'm gone now he cannot hold you down because you have surrendered everything he gave you before. What I'm telling you is, Satan registered your name in the gang. He registered your name in the occult. And Satan registered you among the idol worshippers who are serving him. And Satan put alcohol, beer in your hand. And he put tobacco in your mouth. And he put all those things. And he says, he is mine. And now you say you are going with Jesus. And the man, the Satan says, where are you going? You have all my property with you. Then when you say all your property, all your alcohol, all your beer, all your tobacco, and everything, all the prostitutes and everything, all those concubines and everything, I drop, and you give what belongs to Satan to Satan, and then you walk away, and you are free, and you belong to Jesus, you surrender, and wonders will happen in your life. The wonder of salvation, the wonder of healing, the wonder of deliverance, and the wonder of miracles in your life, in Jesus' name. Surrender, surrender. Now you come, you say your heart is no more free, because you see Satan is not going to be struggling and fighting with Satan. I have him. No, you don't have him. I possess him. No, you don't possess him. He's mine. No, he's not yours. No argument. Once you surrender, and you give what belongs to Satan to Satan, and you walk away, and you are free, and say, Lord Jesus, now I come, I surrender myself completely or reservedly unto you, Christ will say, welcome, welcome to the wonders of your life. Welcome, welcome to the salvation from heaven. Welcome, welcome to the goodness of God. And today, the Lord will welcome you in Jesus' name. Miracles. Where is the miracle coming? It will come as a surrender in Jesus' name. And look at Acts of the Apostle, chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 11. Acts of the Apostle, chapter 19, verse 11. And God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul. Who is Paul? Paul is the one that had paper in his hand, document in his hand, to go and persecute all the Christians and was going to Damascus. And then the Lord met him. He fell on the ground. Immediately he surrendered. He said, this paper I've got from the Sanhedrin, I will not use that paper anymore to arrest the Christians, the believers. He surrendered that and threw it back to them. And then he surrendered his life to the Lord Jesus Christ and said, Lord, 
what will you have me to do the rest of my life? I surrender unto you. And it was only after that that the Lord, the God of heaven, wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. And then in verse 12, we're told, so that from his body were brought unto the sick, and cashes or aprons and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them it will happen now yes. to, me, to, me. to me to me and to my family it will happen but you surrender, you surrender everything the devil stopped your life with. You, you kick everything out and you turn it away and you say, I belong to Jesus from now on. I'm telling you, special miracle is coming your way. Uh, look at verse 18. Look at verse 18. In verse 18 of that same Psalm 19. Uh, sorry. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, verse 18. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many who believed the Lord, they came, they confessed, and they showed their deeds. Look at verse 19. Many of them also, which used curious eyes, brought their books together and bunched them, and bunched them. They bought the property, the charm, the talisman, the waistband, the books of um, all the occultists in him. They brought everything together and they bought them before all men so that all men will realize they are no more for Satan. I am no more for Satan. I am no more for idols. I am no more for evil spirits. And every physical thing, the regalia, the clothing, the charm, the waistband, anything and everything, the smoking, the cigar, the cigarette, and the alcohol, they pushed everything back to the devil, they disposed of them, and then they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. They said, well, don't mind. Why don't you sell it to other people? No. When I, when I add them, it made me a slave to Satan. I don't want to sell it to anybody. Give it to anybody and make another person a slave to the devil. We're going to burn them and they bunch them. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, it says, So mightily grew the watch of God and prevailed. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. From tonight, the word of God is in your heart. It's in your mouth. You believe. I believe that Jesus died for me on the cross. And he rose again the third day. I believe that, you believe that, he believed that, she believes that, everybody will believe that, and the word of God will power, will salvation, will deliverance, will grow mightily and prevail. And then when you live here tonight, the word will prevail in your life. Amen. Satan will not prevail anymore. Amen. Sin will not prevail anymore. Amen. Sickness will not prevail anymore. Premature death will not prevail anymore. Demons will not prevail anymore. And the powers of darkness will not prevail anymore. From tonight, the word, the word of power, from tonight, the word, the word of grace, from tonight, the word of faith, from tonight, the word of miracle, of signs and wonders will prevail in your life. Am I talking to somebody there? It will be so for you in Jesus' name. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. For these days of the signs and wonders for the needy crusade, many people have been coming to know the Lord. And we're soon going to end. And the word is coming to you right now that this same word 
the word of faith that brings wonders and signs, miracles, that it will take effect in your life as you surrender your life unto the Lord. And everything belonging to Satan, everything belonging to this world of evil in your hand, in your character, in your behavior, you drop everything and you turn unto the Lord, immediately the salvation of God will come to you. It's about an eyes closed. If you're doing that now, you surrender all the property of the devil, all the character of the devil, all the behavior of the devil. You throw it back to the devil. And then you surrender your heart unto the Lord anywhere you are to show heaven that you're doing that. And you mean it from the depth of your heart. Wherever you are, raise up your hand. God bless you there. God bless you there. Raise up that hand. Raise up that the Lord is waiting for you. Don't say, I'm a member of Deeper Life. I'm a member of the church. That one doesn't count. It's that you surrender your heart, your life unto the Lord. Wherever you are, on the ground floor, on the gallery, wherever you are, in any state and any country, wherever you are, that you have participated with us in hearing the word of God and you accept the word, you believe the word, you apply the word, you know this is talking to you. And it wants you, the whosoever there to be saved tonight, just raise up that hand, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, and I come to you now. I want my sins forgiven. I want all the shameful things I've done totally taken away. And I surrender my very heart to you tonight. Raise up that hand. Stand up, stand up, stand up wherever you are. Don't allow the salvation to pass you by. Don't allow the deliverance to pass you by. Don't allow heaven's glory to pass you by. Don't allow the Savior to pass you by. Raise up the hand and stand up. As you stand up, tell the Lord, Lord, I come to you. Lord, I call upon you. I surrender. Every evil thing, every bad thing, I throw them away. And I return unto my God. I surrender my heart to the Lord right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I know you receive me. I know you forgive me. And I know you change my life. In Jesus' name, we pray. Father, in Jesus' name, you said anyone who comes to you through your beloved son, only begotten son, you will in no wise cast away. All these people have come, both here, online, everywhere. They have surrendered themselves unto you. Accept them, forgive them, save them in Jesus' name. Let your spirit be a witness in their hearts, the children of God from now on in Jesus' name. And grant everyone the power to go and sin no more. They will not be slaves and servants of Satan, of sin anymore in Jesus' name. Let your spirit be a witness in their hearts. They are now children of God. Confirm it, Lord, in every life. That they believe in their heart. They confess with their mouth. That Jesus died for them and rose again. And because of that, they now belong unto you unreservedly. Thank you, Lord, for their salvation. Thank you, Lord, for their forgiveness. Thank you, Lord, for the freedom. I pray this salvation will abide ever in their hearts in Jesus' name. It's done. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Keep on standing. Our counselors will come to you there. We'll call on our state overseer to please take over now. You are now a believer. Keep standing. You are now born again. Our leaders, go to them now quickly and take their particulars, their debtors, their name, the phone number, their address, 
and they make sure that there's no error, no mistake. If it's MTN or Airtel or whatever, make sure that the numbers are correct, figures. Count the digits and write legibly, capital letters, and then sign as the counselor. Keep standing until they are done with you. What you have done tonight is a miracle. You are saved. You are no more a sinner. Please, gallery also, those in Africa, the same thing we are, do, we are doing here, do the same thing there in Nigeria, the same thing in America, the same thing in Canada, Hong Kong, Australia, the same thing we are doing here, the same thing we do there, there. To conserve these converts, to preserve them. Of course, there'll be a banquet on the, on the 1st of August in all our states and regions. But then there's a package from the pastor. We can't give you now the, the package. We shall give you that package on the 1st, so don't, don't miss it. Let's be fast and transfer the list, the, 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 the slip, so if follow up tonight, they will now send them SMS, reminding them of the, of the banquets. And of course, tomorrow is the last day. Those are already born again, you have a problem, be praying now, tonight, 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 you are no more an observer, are we a partaker, I will come out here and testify. Let me fast our leaders, our hall reps, our hall coordinators, be attentive, when you are done, let us know you are done, halls 1 to 10 and the member, those outside, overflow, check up, my brother in charge of overflow, check up also. Do the same thing we are doing here. When you are done, indicate, indicate. When you are done, indicate to save time. Just get the accurate name and address. Don't say just Musa or Akim. That's no address. Give us definition of the area so you can capture them hereafter. When you are done, indicate, indicate. The pastor is waiting for miracle prayer. Don't go away. The bosses are waiting. So you don't have today is the last bit one night. So it's almost done. Make sure you get the best. You get the best in this crusade. It's a global one. When you are true, okay, you are true. That hall is true. Is that hall six is true? Hall six is true. How about hall ten, nine, eight? How about the down calls? How about the outside, the overflow outside, waiting for you, the pastor is waiting already for a miracle prayer now. We pray now, whatever is your problem, sickness, no matter what it is, it will disappear now. When you are done, let's see the flag. Okay, you are done. Because seven is done. Or seven is done. Hall ten is done also. God bless you. How about the down halls? The down halls. Okay. You're done. That memo is done. God bless you. Okay. Hall three is done. Is it three? Yes, three. Hall two. Is it three or two? Is done also. God bless you. Be praying now. Okay. Oh, that hall is done also. All right. The hall four is done. God bless you. God bless you. It's done. Be praying now and have faith in the pastor's prayer. Whatever you say you should do, do it. And then you see miracle in your body, in your system now. It's a day of miracle. Yes, are you done? All right. Our oh, one is done now. Our oh, one is done. God bless you. The pastor is here already. Get set now. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. If you believe a miracle is coming your way, I said, Praise the Lord. <clears throat> I believe, I, believe. I, accept. I accept 
I confess with my mouth. And then the miracle will happen right there. You raise up one hand and you lay the other hand on yourself. You are expecting, you believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth, and that sickness will vanish away. That miracle will come. Power will be manifested in your life. Father, in Jesus' name, your word cannot fail. Your word of grace cannot fail. Your word of power cannot fail. The word of faith cannot fail. And Lord, I pray that word will prevail in every life right now in Jesus' name. Lord, let the word prevail now over every sickness in their lives in Jesus' name. Over every demonic affliction attack in Jesus' name. Over all the deformity and impossibilities of their lives in Jesus' name. Over blindness. Over tuberculosis. Over deafness <clears throat> and over every challenge in Jesus' name. Receive your healing now. Receive your miracle now. Receive the power, manifestation, demonstration right now in Jesus' name. Receive and manifest the signs and wonders in your life. It is done. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. It's right there. The words, the wonders have prevailed in your life. Do what you couldn't do before. You've got your miracle. Shall we say amen?